Hi everybody, welcome to Floss Tube number 47. I am so excited to have a chance to visit with you guys a little bit today. I skipped last Sunday and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, I was returning from the Silver Needle Retreat, which I'm gonna share a little bit about here in a little bit, and um, had had a wonderful weekend. Unfortunately, right before I left for Silver Needle, my husband and I had um, walked some property that we, my mother and husband and I, that we purchased. And I have not had sugars since I was probably a teenager. Nobody else got them but me. There wasn't any tall grass, so I felt fairly safe. I thought, oh, it'll be fine. We went out and walked the property and got home and oh my goodness, I was eat up. I told them that's just cause I was a little sweeter maybe the chiggers thought, but I had chigger bites all over my ankles. So before I went to Silver Needle, I went to the doctor and talked to her and got a steroid shot and she gave me these anti-itch pills that were supposed to be like wonderful, left for the retreat. Well, while I was there, I broke out in this rash and um, ended up having an allergic reaction to the medicine. So I had to stop taking it. And when I got home, I went back to the doctor and she said, yes, stay off of it. Let's give you a whole nother round of steroids. And so finally, I, I think I am chigger free and can sleep through the night again and all that good stuff. So things like that just happen sometimes. And I guess last week was my week. So thank you guys for being patient while I dealt with um, a little allergic reaction and a little bit of chigger bite. So it was an experience that I do not want to repeat. I told my husband, I said, we have got to put granules or something out there. I'm not even sticking my big toe on that property until we have it treated because I do not ever want to have chigger bites like I had this last time. What an experience. So anyway, thank you guys for sticking in there and waiting on me. Um, I just want to say welcome to all of our new followers. We've got a lot of new followers on here. So thank you for joining us. I appreciate Lisa, uh, Lady Huzza for giving a shout out last week and Donnie from the Stitch and Scotty for a shout out as well. Uh, several of you that joined this week said that you'd heard about me from their channels. So I appreciate that guys. And also welcome back to you who have been following me each week and I appreciate all the old and new followers just, as, just the same. So thank you for joining me and being my stitchy friends today. Um, also, I want to just start off by sharing a little bit about the Silver Needle Retreat. My mom, this has been on her bucket list for a while because Tulsa is fairly close to us. We can be there in three and a half hours, technically. Now, we will never make it in three and a half hours because of course we have to stop somewhere for lunch or, or whatever. We have to stop, there's a great antique shop in Clarksville that we pass right by. So that's a stop, I have to stop and check it out. So it takes us technically more than three and a half hours, but it's still a fairly quick trip for us to make. So we were able to attend this summer. It was fantastic. Just such a nice large stitching room. Um, everything was so well organized. A lot of my friends were there. We miss Mary Susan being with us at our table, but we all got together and met up and it's so good when you can get with your friends that also stitch and just have a fun time at a retreat. And I was actually able to see some of you. So thank you to those of you who said hi and um, it's great to see each other in person. So uh, that was a highlight for me, just getting a chance to see some of you that I feel like I already know because I talked to you on here, but to actually see you in person and visit was, was really great. So thank you for, for letting me know you were there. Um, everything in the class, we had the drawn thread and um, then Bessil was there and we had so much fun. Those ladies are so sweet and so knowledgeable. And it was just a pleasure to sit in and listen to them and look at their projects and have a chance to take those home with us. So I'm gonna show you what the class projects were. Um, have I completed any of them? No, I did start on Beth's, but um, this is the cover. It's the Scarlet Avery, and this was such a pretty little drum. You kind of see it's got stitching around the top. 
This is a bird house, and she told us kind of where she got the inspiration for that. And then it has some of these little smalls, a little pin keep, and this actually holds a little waxer. And um, here's the back. So, I mean, it has everything that you could possibly need, including, look at that adorable little bird waxer. Maybe it's not so blurry if I hold it back. So, all the finishing materials, all the things you need to stitch it, it's just a great, great little packet. So we got that. Let's start another pile over here. Um, this was our Make It Take It from Beth. And it's just a little, it looks like it's the strawberry, but it wasn't for the strawberry. You see this little piece here, it's made using paper. And that is attached, once you complete your drum, you attach that to the top of it. And you can see, I mean, she thought of everything, had everything in the little kit. Um, so just a super, super little kit. So that was another goodie from Beth. Then I had all this organized in my basket and I was pulling it over to my chair right before I started and the basket fell, so it's in a bit of a tumble. Okay, the drawn thread had something called a stitcher's garden. And I, I don't know if you can see, it has so many different elements in it that have to do with stitching. There's like ABC, there's a pair of scissors, a needle and thread, some floss. It's just adorable. And then once again, with this kit, it has everything in it. You have all your thread, your linen, just everything that you need. And so this, I can't wait. I really want to do this and put it up in my stitching room at some point. Don't know when I'm going to, because I have a whole basket of, I want to do that. Well, I think I want to do this too. I know you guys are probably the same way, but it will go in that basket of all that I want to make someday projects, because I think that's just adorable. She also gave us, it's the same similar kit. It's called a Stitcher's Garden Tote. And so it has a little design and the directions on how to make this tote. And she had actually done one and put in the silent auction, which was absolutely gorgeous. And it was nice to see it finished and um, the directions are excellent, but it sure helps when you see something that's actually finished and can look at it closely. But it's just adorable. So those were two projects that we have from the drawn thread. And her little um, make it, take it, I don't think I can show it. No, I can't. It was a little um, Celtic cross scissors fob because it's just the pattern. I don't have a picture of it. But she included the linen we needed and we each got a different color skein of floss. That was kind of a variegated. So as you stitched, it would kind of change the colors with the, the way the Celtic cross was designed. So it was really cute. Um, a friend of mine, Dee, finished hers. She got right on it and it's adorable. So I'm hoping that's an incentive for me to get mine finished because it is a fairly quick and easy little project. Then, of course, you cannot go to the Silver Needle without shopping, right? They have, it, it can be overwhelming. Um, I just walk in and look and there's so many cute things that it's hard to make my mind up. But I'll show you a few of the things that I got. This was the exclusive from Summer House Stitch Works and it kind of goes along with her class project. And this is only available at um, Silver Needle. It's called Birds and Berries and it's just a sweet little pin keep. So I had to have that. It's exclusive, gotta have it. Then, this was also Summer House Stitch Works, and it's one of her 2023 Fragments in Time. And I just bought this one because I love the basket of flowers. Isn't that sweet? There's a couple others in this series that I'm gonna have to have too, but I thought this one was just adorable with those roses. Kind of looks like mom's room. I told her she needed to stitch that one to go in her room. Then my, um, no, I'll show you this one first. This is another one because she had a trunk show, Summer House Stitch Works, Days of Christmas Past. And I've kind of been, you know, last video, I showed you the perforated bookmark that I did and turned into a key hanger. 
Well, I've kind of been on that perforated paper kick thinking, you know, that was really kind of fun stitch on. I, I think I need to do more of those. And I thought these were absolutely beautiful with done, you know, ornaments for Christmas done on the perforated paper. And how sweet that you can include these little photos. So my goal, you notice I said goal. I don't know that it's going to get done. I'm going to try and recruit mom's help and, and, um, just see if we can't get it done at some point. But I would love to have a little fir tree and take family members that maybe have passed along already and even family members that are still here, but especially those that we don't have with us at Christmas and do a little tree with these ornaments all over it with their pictures. I just think that would be a special way to remember them in the holidays and enjoy having them with us as well. So that's my goal for buying this, this little pattern, but I think it's just such a sweet, sweet little chart. And then I can stitch some more on perforated paper. Then my, I've shared pictures on Instagram and talked about a little bit when we went out to Bristol weekend, my daughter-in-law and her sister flew out and met my mother and I, and we had to, I had to take them to see the attic, of course. Well, while we were in there, they each picked out a project and I am so proud of them. I know Haley watches my video sometimes. So if Haley, if you're watching, I'm really, really proud of you. So I'm going to brag on you today. Um, they have worked so hard and just done amazing stitching. It's hard for me when I see their stitching. I think back to when I first started and I couldn't hold a candle to either one of those girls. They have really done a fantastic job with their first projects. And so I love it when I get little pictures sent to me saying, look what I finished tonight. And it's just fun to see them picking up that love of stitching as well. So I had to get a pattern. So Haley, you're gonna get a sneak peek at it if you're watching. Haley has, well, it's my grand dog, Cash, and he's precious. He is, looks, part corgi. He's got a bunch of other stuff in him too, but he has that little corgi wiggle butt and he's just, he's adorable. So I thought this had to be stitched. So I'm going to send this to Haley. Doesn't mean you have to do it right now, but I just couldn't pass it up. I thought they were adorable and reminded me of Cash. Then uh, my youngest son's girlfriend, she wanted to start and she's actually completed her first project and has already started on another one. And I have to tell you a story that I thought was just adorable. She texted me one night and she had finished her little project. She did a little cat. And she said, I'm going to my mother's house this weekend and I'm worried that I'm gonna be finished with this and I won't have something else to stitch on. So I've got to go by Stitcher's Garden and get another project. And I thought she is a true stitcher because we can't ever be without our stitching, can we? And so for her to say, she had to have another one on standby. So if she finished the one she was working on, she had another something to stitch on. Just let me know she's a true stitcher. So I had to pick her up something and she loves cats. I have a grand kitty, which is a Maine Coon. She's a huge, huge cat. I posted pictures. So those of you that follow me on Facebook have probably seen pictures of Millie, who is, that's her name. She's a beautiful cat. But, um, so Katie has been very interested in stitching cats. So I saw this and thought it was just adorable. It's a little needle book. And so the front of the needle book has the front of the cat. And then look at the back of it. It's a little tail end of the cat. I thought that was so cute. And then it shows kind of the inside of what it looks like. So they each had to get a goodie from me for their stitching when we were out at the Silver Needle. Um, let's see, what else? I'm getting all my haul out of the way so I can share that with you. Oh, I told you about going through Clarksville and how they have just an excellent antique shop. So I stopped, of course, my car just automatically veers if it sees an antique shop. And I saw this little frame, isn't this adorable? And I have no idea what I'm gonna put in it yet but I do, I just purchased another sampler um, from Richard Grizek. He messaged me saying that he had a little Richardson sampler. 
and I tease him, I'm like, you know it's an obvious sale because if it's a sampler with Richardson, you know I have to have it. And this one is just a little tiny sampler. So I've got my fingers crossed. I'll let you guys know when I get it in, if it's gonna fit, but I'm hoping I can um, reproduce it and put it in this frame because I just love, love that frame. I'll probably paint it. I don't wanna leave it. It's like they've um, kind of a greenish gray and then they've run silver over the rough edges, which is pretty, but it doesn't fit kind of what I'm wanting. So I'll probably paint it black, distress it, wax it, and I'll have to show you guys if I get, if the sampler fits and I get to do that. So you never know when you stop at flea markets or antique shops, you just never know what you're gonna run into or find. And I think I paid 550 maybe for this. I can't remember, I paid 550 for one thing and six up for another. So anyway, at either price, this was a bargain to me. So that was another little haul item that I had. Um, the last of what I'm gonna show you from Silver Needle, I was so sweet. They had a pincushion or small exchange. And I had the note here that told who made this. I want to give her credit. It was, it's called Biscornu Ornament, Poppy Binner, um, a cross-stitch Christmas book magazine. 2020, she thinks, is where this pattern came from. And it was stitched by Peggy Miller. And it is just the sweetest yet in this little bag but it is the tiniest little biscornu. Isn't that sweet? Both the front and the back stitched. So I thought that was just precious. I love little bitty tiny things and it just looks so sweet. And then she had also included a little um, candy cane scissor fob. So I'll be ready for Christmas stitching. But that was fun. The exchanges are always fun because um, I love the stitch and I do the samplers and I guess they're for me. I enjoy them, I put them up in the house. But it, little things like this, I don't usually take time to do for me, maybe for gifts. And so to have an exchange where I get to take something home is kind of fun. So that was, well, that was nice to have at Silver Needle. Then, um, my friend Polly, I have to show you because I have it over here in this basket. We are all, our little group of friends is traveling to the Great British Sampler Weekend coming up in September. And we've been waiting on this over a year. And it's finally close enough that we're like, oh my goodness, it's gonna be here before we know it. And um, she decided we needed a convenient, compact stitching kit to take with us. And she, we were all looking at her. She brought hers and had it set up on the table at Silver Needle. And we were thinking, oh my goodness, that's perfect. That's what we need. And then we got there the next morning and she had made a kit for each of our little friend group. I, she is just the dearest, dearest person. I can't explain how excited we all were because Polly is just an excellent seamstress. And to receive this gift from her, we're all gonna be set up. We said we're gonna be styling when we go to a Great British Sampler Weekend because Polly has fixed us up with all of the sewing things that we need. So I'm gonna show it to you. Um, this is the little bag that holds everything for us. And what was so sweet, she knows what we all like, our colors and um, special designs or whatever. Like I love violets, of course. And so mine has violets and purples and things in it. Um, Dee likes hearts and pink. And so she made sure she had some of that on hers. And she did that for everybody's bag. And that was just made it really special. So now I'll show you what's in the bag. She had this little stitching piece and it will fold and fit over your easel or whatever you use to as a stand. And so if you open it up, I'll try and hold it up as you can see, there's this felt, which is great for keeping your threads in place. This is a magnet and it's strong enough, it will hold the embroidery scissors. There's a little pocket, you can tuck things in here. Also, back, and you see I've got something in there. This is a little zippered pouch, and it all folds up together and just ties. So that's a great piece to take with us. Then she made a little placemat. 
so we can keep all of our stuff organized and make sure we're not um, getting into everybody's way. We all have our little spot. And I love this because I have a larger one that I love and it's great, but if there's a lot of people at the table, it can be a little big, so I've been folding it. But this is just the right size to kind of put up and have at your place. So that's in the bag as well. Then we have this little um, or, or work tray, whatever you wanna use it for, you just snap it together. It lays flat for travel. And then when you get where you're going, you snap the sides and you have your own little tray. Then, but wait, there's more. Um, she made us all little um, coasters for our drinks. So um, just something cute to put in there and have a place to set your drink when you need to. And all that goes back in this bag. So thank you, Polly. We were so excited. She had an entire table full of friends just oohing and on because we, we have, we're we ready now. We're just counting the days down. We're gonna pack our little bags up and we'll be off to London for the Great British Sampler weekend. So I had to share that with you. Now, I want to get on with the topic today. Um, I told you last week I wasn't really sure the last time I talked with you what I was gonna talk about. I had hoped to have a little sampler done to show you, but I'm not finished with it yet. So I'm gonna postpone that. And I want to talk about how sometimes samplers aren't always what they appear. And I know I've mentioned that I've bought samplers from Richard Greasy before. I've bought samplers from um, different sellers on eBay. Now, Richard, I've dealt with him enough that I trust his judgment. He's good about sending extra pictures if I need them. But on eBay, I've been a little nervous before because I'm like, I don't know, you know, this is coming from across the pond. I hope it, it's what they say it is. And um, so that can be a little nerve wracking sometimes. I've been fortunate though. Uh, every sampler that I have purchased off of eBay has truly been what I thought it was gonna be. So that's not what I wanna talk about. What I wanna talk about is sometimes when you look at a sampler, it may not look the same when you look at it on both sides. And that's the case in this sampler that I'm gonna show you today. I've had samplers that there's some fading and there's a little bit of a difference. And that's why anytime I go to reproduce the sampler, I want to look at the back of the fabric because that's gonna be the truest colors, the ones that were closest to when the sampler was originally stitched. And so I always do that anyway. But this particular sampler that I'm getting ready to show you has probably been the biggest shocker of any sampler I've ever purchased. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's huge. So it's gonna be hard to show you all of it at one time, but I'll show you sections. When I received this sampler, um, the seller had done an amazing job packing it. I mean, it was still in the frame with the glass. He had taped the glass. He'd wrapped it many times in bubble wrap. He even had, I don't think they were pool noodles, but it was something similar to that where it had a slit and it fit around the frame. So that was an extra packaging piece that he added to it. So he had done everything he could to see that it got here in one piece. Unfortunately, when I unboxed it, the glass was shattered and the frame was broken. So to me, as well as he had it packaged, the box had to have been dropped or something because it was in a dozen pieces. It was really in bad shape and it had actually, the glass had cut some of the sampler. So that was disappointing. It's a very brittle sampler anyway. And so having that happen sure did not help it. But this, this sweet girl is gonna be reproduced and we're gonna save her by doing that. So let me show it to you. At the top, and this is the part that I saw. This would have been the, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. It's dark, and but it's hard to see. On the front, you can see there's lots of letters. And then in the center is this beautiful bird. And that's what I fell in love with. I loved this bird in the center. And it looks like these soft blues, some red, has this red rose, some taupe and white looking roses as well. I just fell in love with that bird. Then there's these cute little motifs on the side too. We have a cat, we have a gentleman on a horse, 
I love the chicken at the bottom and some additional, there's a little dog. You hear my mom's little dog having a fit because I think my husband just came home. So I'm sorry about the barking. So anyway, I loved it. And so when I got it in, first I was distraught because I saw all the broken glass and some of the tears in the sampler. But I was so shocked, I took it out of the frame. I was removing the glass carefully. And as I remove the sampler, I'm gonna show you what the back looks like because it is nothing at all like the front. So here is that beautiful soft colored bird that we just looked like from the back. So this would have been the original colors that were used. These vibrant blues, like a royal blue, not the soft, kind of 930, 931 blues. This is a vibrant royal blue. And the flower that I thought was red, there is a red flower, but there was one next to it that was taupe and tan and white. That's that same flower from the back. We have these vibrant pinks and kind of maroons and everything. Doesn't look anything like the front. And there's another one with the bright blue at the top and the pinks. And then again, over on this side. And even the other motifs that you can see, completely different once you look at the back. And I think this young lady didn't mind carrying her thread. There's a couple spots where she, she just carried it on over. But this sampler, and then at the top, there's a row of flowers that you can just see Look how bright those colors are. Just amazing to me. And I I had to, I called my mom, I was calling my friend. I'm like, y'all will never believe this sampler because I thought I was getting this very soft, muted, beautiful bird. And it is from the front. And if you can see, see if I can, fold it and hold it up where you can see a little better. This particular rose right here, you see how that just looks like taupes, creams and tans. That is this flower right here. Nothing like it, is it? Just completely, completely different. So I posted a picture of this on my Instagram. And it was so much fun because I had so many different comments. I had people that were very for doing the original, the, the bright colors. They're like, I love those bright colors. And then I had other people who were like, oh my goodness, I like the soft muted colors on the front. That's, that's the color that attracts me. And so it, it was about 50-50. And I've done other little polls and uh, went to the attic and I took this to pick out my silks. And Jean was looking at it and she's like, oh, I like the front, which side are you gonna do? <laughs> and um, I really, my plan for this is that I will chart it as both the front, you'll have the option of stitching it in the colors that are faded and you'll have the option of stitching it as the original colors show on the back. And that way you can pick and choose. You'll get the chart and you'll have both colorways. So you can choose to do a bright version or you can choose to do the more muted um, tones on the front. I'm not sure, my colors are more the blues and reds, a little more muted that I have in my house. So that's probably, um, what I'm gonna stitch, I, it depends. This one will be at market next year. And I will either, I'd like to have it stitched in both colorways so you can see what it would look like um, depending which version you choose to stitch. So we'll see, that will be a challenge, but I think it will be a fun stitch. I'll show you some of the silks that I picked out. These are just for the front. There's a whole, and you can see how many colors were used in this particular design. But just some beautiful colors that we'll have to um, reproduce that sampler. Then, uh, here it is. 
I had purchased this piece. We went to Asheville for mother's birthday last April. She loves the Biltmore. So we went out there for her birthday and they have an excellent antique shop um, called the Tobacco Barn. Some of you may have been there before. And so we went to the Tobacco Barn and I saw this piece and just fell in love with it. It's got a neat needlework piece in it, but my plan is I also just want to stitch the bird in the middle and put that in this piece that I'm getting ready to show you. So it's kind of awkward because it's a big, it's on a big wooden stand, but I'll try and just tip it where hopefully you can see. It has this big oval and it will slide up and down on the floor stand. It sits in the floor and then you put your piece in here. There's the top. And then this larger piece goes up and down. You can put it where you would like on the stand. So that's kind of my goal for the big bird. I wanna put him in this, this wooden piece that I found at the tobacco barn. So there's another antique find. Um, you never know what you're gonna find when you go antiquing. And that's some of my funnest time. You know, I enjoy going and seeing what I can find. Um, I wanted to also, after sharing that with you, talk about why does, why do we have our thread colors fade? And especially on antique samplers, that's probably one of the biggest problems with old samplers is that they weren't taken care of probably how they needed to be. And so fading could come from just exposure to direct sunlight. I know with my antique samplers, I try to keep them where they're not exposed to bright light, and that helps cut down on the fading. During the time that these were first stitched, they didn't realize that that could do a lot of damage to the fibers and linen. And so they would just put them in a frame. Sometimes it didn't even have glass. And if it did have glass, it might not have been a good quality glass. And all of that played a factor in causing the threads to fade. Also humidity levels. You know, our homes today are much more efficient. We don't have those humidity levels that they would have had years ago. And that can also affect how linen or threads remain or retain their color. Uh, dust. I know lots of antique samplers, the linen is a different shade on the front as well as the threads, and that can come from just dust accumulating over time. Moths can also affect the linen just because there may be a hole that has been eaten into by a moth. And um, one tip that I read, and I thought it was a good piece of advice, I haven't done it on all mine, but I may need to start. It said when you receive a new sampler, a new old sampler, let's say, you should probably quarantine it before you add it to your collection because you don't know if it's been um, around anything that would have picked up pest of some sort. So what they suggested doing was placing it in like a big plastic bag or something that, or a container that you could seal, make sure it was sealed good. And then you place that in your freezer for two weeks. And it said that would kill any infestation or pests that might be in the linen. And that way they wouldn't get into your other samplers that you have in your collection. The only caution they said was when you remove it from the freezer, it's gonna be fragile, even more so than when you put it in there. And so you need to just let it sit until it completely defrosted and then it would be okay to handle. But then talk about handling. You would have to be careful because as um, humans, we have oils and we have salt on our skin and just picking up a sampler and handling it if our hands are not clean can transfer some of that over to the linen or the threads and cause damage as well. And so I was just trying to make sure before I handle any of my samplers, like before I came on to do the floss tube, make sure my hands were clean. And that way, if when I'm picking up one of the samplers, I'm sure that I'm not just leaving a mess, a oily mess on it or anything. Um, another thing that I thought was interesting, um, and this was just, just kind of from some observations I've made. Purple seems to be a color that fades the quickest to me. And the reason I say that is because on this particular sampler, you could see how the back had that very vibrant 
purplish pink color. But then when we turned around to the front, it was gone. And I have two Scottish samplers that are the same way. When I purchased them, all the reds and the greens were still very vibrant on the front, but on the back, I thought there was a dividing band that was cream. And when I removed it from the frame and looked at the back, that cream dividing band was actually purple. And so that was a surprise as well. Not as shocking as this one, but it was still a surprise. And I have another Scottish sampler, that's the same way. Um, the purple was completely gone from the front. And when I removed it, turned it around, you could see it from the back side as well. So I'm just kind of curious, something in that purple dye seems to want to fade a whole lot faster. Um, but just a little, a little tidbit on, you know, we may look at a sampler, but always look at all the angles. Look at the front and the back if you can, because it may not be what it, what it looks like from the front. It, you may find a surprise as well. Um, I think that's all I have today, except our winner announced the winner from last week. It was a chart and it was a little Scottish sampler chart. And that winner is Aura Perez. 6156. So, or if you will send me your mailing address, I'll get that chart shipped out to you this week. And I want to show you what the giveaway is for this week. Um, if I have it over here, I have one of these and um, have just loved it. It's handmade. It's a needle case where they've taken that clay polymer and kind of added some flowers and things to this plain needle case. And I just love mine. I can get so many needles in it and it's just easy to unscrew the lid and I can tap and get one needle out if I need it. So I know my mother has eyeballed mine for a while. And so when we went, she said, I have to have one of those needle cases like you have. So we bought one for her and then I had to get one to give away because I think you'll love it. I absolutely love this little needle case. And so if you can see, it's got these beautiful little flowers that someone has made and stuck all around that needle case. And you just unscrew the little lid and you can get a whole bunch of needles down in it. So this will be our giveaway for this week. And if you wanna be entered to win, just comment below. Be sure you like the page, make sure you're subscribed. And um, I'll put those names in for a drawing and draw for a winner next week. But anyway, I'm not sure when we'll talk about next week. It depends how much I get done on that little sampler. Maybe I can get it to where I can show it to you this next week. So lots going on, a busy week ahead, but um, I'm gonna try and squeeze in a little bit of time each day for some stitching. And I hope you guys can do the same as you're busy in your week as well. Um, just setting time aside to do some stitching and or watch floss tube or whatever kind of refreshes us and gets us ready for the next day or it does me so thank you again I appreciate all of you be sure and hit the bell button so you'll know when I upload another video be sure and, and share my channel with your friends and I appreciate all of you joining in so take care and I will talk to you very soon bye